Hello, my name is Mark Smith. I'm a technical lead here at Syngenta Flowers. Today I wanted to give you a couple of preventative practices to help get your garden worm crop off to the best start. Let's start by discussing the two ways that chrysanthemums set flowers. First is with day length. Short days or long nights will trigger a plant to stop growing vegetatively and become reproductive. The big secret here is how long of a day is really necessary to keep the plant vegetative. The second is cool temperatures. Even in the longest of days, if your night temperatures stay consistently cool, the mums will set flower buds. So let's discuss a little bit about what a short day really is for a mum. Back in 2016, uh, we conducted some photoperiod trials in our greenhouses in Gilroy with a range of natural season flowering garden mums. We found that most varieties when exposed to a 13 and a half hour night or an 11 and a half hour night flowered in about the same amount of time. And this makes sense. Our standard recommendation for black cloth programs has always been a 12 and a half hour night is sufficient for bud set. As we uh, decrease that to a 10 and a half hour night, we found a delay in flowering. The primary varieties that were affected by this delay were the later natural season flowering varieties. And then as we went to a nine and a half hour night, we found a delay across all varieties and the latest natural season varieties were at a point where they may never flower as a bud initiation had not occurred when we threw the trial out. So this means any very early, early, early mid, mid, and even mid late natural season varieties will flower in a 14 and a half hour day. And this will cause concern for anybody starting their crop either in propagation or transplanting in May or early June, because throughout most of North America, the natural day length is not long enough to prevent flower initiation. Now that we know a 14 and a half hour day is not long enough to prevent flower bud initiation on all varieties, we need to discuss ways to manipulate the natural photo period to prevent flower initiation. Night interruption lighting is the ideal. This works for all, air, all varieties in all areas of the country and has been proven over many years. We would run lights from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. each night and run lights bright enough to get 10 foot candles of light in the darkest spot at the bench level. It's okay to have more lights in some spots of the greenhouse, but you wanna have at least 10 foot candles in the darkest spot. This is a relatively easy system to set up in propagation where the square footage is smaller. And we would recommend lighting your garden mums in propagation 52 weeks of the year. After the cuttings are transplanted, Growers typically move them to natural long days, but you need to be aware of when the natural long day is still not long enough and when we still need to be running night interruption lighting after transplant. Transplanting in May or early June should be looking at continuing those pots under, under night interruption lighting. When lighting is not possible, Florel can be used as a tool to help compensate for insufficient photo period. Florel is not as foolproof as lighting and may not solve all the problems if the photoperiod pressure is very strong. Florel is also a preventative, not a curative. We need to make sure we put Florel on the plants before they are exposed to short days. This is typically about a week after stick in propagation and two or three days after transplant for rooted cuttings. Now let's talk a little bit about night temperatures to prevent bud initiation. Need to maintain a night temperature above 62 or more ideally above 65 during the growing phase of the mum. This helps to keep the plant going and no setback from bud initiation. Obviously the best way to do this is to hold the plants in the greenhouse where night temperatures can be controlled until outside temperatures are consistently above 62 degrees. It's actually better to transplant and move outside in late June or early July than in early June for growers in the north. You will end up with bigger plants by transplanting and going outside later 
because there is no setback in growth because of the bud initiation. Another option to try is propagating in a larger cell to allow the plants to start to grow and branch before transplant and then still be able to transplant later in June. If temperature control is, is not possible, Florel can again be used as a tool, but just as with photoperiod, it is not foolproof. If the, cold, if the night temperatures are consistently too cold, it can overcome the Florel effect. And just as with photoperiod, Florel is a preventative, not a curative. So we wanna make sure that we're putting on the Florel before the plants are exposed to cold nights. For the next three slides, I have some pictures of some buds that you might see while you're growing your garden mum crop. In each picture, the plants on the left-hand side are Jacqueline pink, and the plants on the right-hand side are an older variety, Symphony pink. The buds that you see on the Jacqueline are not actually flower buds and will not develop into a flower. They are what we call a long day leaf number bud. Every variety, even under the longest of days, will eventually set a bud after a certain number of leaves are laid down. The plant will continue to grow and cover up these buds, provided that the environment has long enough days and warm enough nights. The symphony buds are real flower buds. At some point earlier in the crop, the uh, flower buds were initiated and conditions have been such that flower development has continued. These buds will eventually turn into flowers. These pictures show the same plants about four weeks later. The Jacqueline on the left has continued to grow and actually set more of those long day leaf number buds. The symphony on the right, the original buds have opened up and become flowers and you can see that there's some additional buds that have set along with some vegetative growth on the plant. And now the third set of pictures, also about four weeks later than the uh, second set, we can see that the Jacqueline has grown to full size and is now coming into color very uniformly as the conditions for photoperiod have changed and now flower buds are encouraged. The symphony plants uh, continue to be uh, haphazard and uneven in flowering response uh, with both flowers and some green buds on them. The big message here is there are certain buds, those long day leaf number buds, that we don't need to overreact to. They are a natural part of the process and the plant will grow right through them. What we need to be concerned about is those flower buds. If we can keep the plants under a manipulated long day and with warm temperatures, or if we're not able to do that, apply some Florel, we should be able to prevent those flower buds from ever starting. And if we see little buds, they're most likely just those long day leaf number buds and we don't need to be concerned with them. Fusarium is an issue that can be a reoccurring problem for some growers in their garden mum crop. Doing preventative treatments for fusarium can help stop the problem from becoming a bigger issue later in the crop. There are three things that you need for any disease, an inoculum, the source of the disease, the proper environment, conditions that favor the growth of the disease, and a susceptible host. If you're missing any of these, the disease will not be an issue, which is why there are some growers that don't have any fusarium problems, while other growers have issues. If you've had fusarium in the past, there is a special spore stage of fusarium that can overwinter in very harsh conditions and wait for the environment to be right to come back for growth the following season. There are several growers who have problems in certain spots of their field that most likely have these spores overwintering and coming back in the new crop. Preventative fungicide treatments are needed to prevent the problem from repeating. It will help stop when that spore germinates from infecting the new plants. The key of preventative applications is to do them before any problems are seen as we are trying to protect the roots 
so that the later uh, plant, upper body of the plant is safe and growing. The next three slides are some slides that my colleague Nancy Rexiegel put together with some information on uh, preventative control of fusarium. This first slide lists several different compounds that are effective against fusarium. I do want to highlight a couple of things. The OHP is in a lighter color because it has been found to be less effective on fusarium in the past few years. And the Terragard, Heritage, and Mural are bolded as they have been found to be more effective on fusarium. It is important that we are using several different uh, fungicides when developing a fusarium program so that we don't end up with uh, creating resistance problems to various fungicides. This slide shows a week-by-week -week rotation of various products to protect against fusarium as well as some other common insect and disease issues with garden mums. This rotation is designed for a 12 to 16 week crop. If your actual crop time is shorter after transplant, consider starting your fusarium treatments three weeks after transplant and rotating into another drench applied product three to four weeks after the previous one. The Concert 2 spray for outdoor production can be used in between drench applications. This slide outlines a weekly rotation of products, not only for fusarium control, but also uh, some other common foliage disease issues. Keep in mind that dithane and dalcanol should not be sprayed on plants showing color, either bud color or flowers, as those products can burn the flowers. I also wanted to highlight a couple of new varieties that are available this year. There is still time to add these to your program, at least in a trial level, so that you could become more familiar with them to incorporate them in full scale in 2021. Here we can see the two new introductions on the left hand side, Tanya Yellow and Samantha Red, very early natural season varieties that pair very well with our existing Arlette Purple and Shannon White. This crop uh, from Michigan was stuck in week 22. One florel was applied during propagation. Cuttings were transplanted into three quart pots outside under natural conditions in week 25. These photographs were taken on August 25th and show a flower stage that's probably a bit more open than uh, growers normally would like to see. So this is a very easy crop to have shipped in week 34. The uh, black saucer underneath the pots is not the pot. It's actually a support structure to keep the plants from blowing over in the trial. Plant size on these very easily filled out the three quart pots. These pictures from New Jersey show the same four varieties, uh, very, very similar crop conditions, sticking in week 22, one florel and prop, in this case transplanted into nine inch pots in week 25. Photographs were taken a few days later on August 29th, but again, easily could have shipped in week 34, and plant size more than enough to uh, fill out the three quart pot requirement. And in this third example, under the high temperature and short photo period conditions of Alabama, we have the same four varieties with photographs taken on August 31st, showing even more open color. So again, still can make that week 34 ship stage. In this case, sticking week 23, one florel and prop, transplanting in week 26, and making more than enough size for the three quart pot. And here are a couple of different examples of the new introductions, Tanya Yellow and Samantha Red, from sample cuttings that we had sent to several growers in 2019. In this case, we have Texas and Florida, some extreme areas and some different culture that was performed. The Texas plants were stuck in week 20, given florel and propagation, transplanted out to natural conditions in week 23, Photographs here were taken in week 33, and I think these plants could easily have shipped. So we actually have an earlier flowering response than we saw in the other examples from an earlier transplant week. 
In Florida, we have a later start with a stick week in 27. In this case, no Florel was applied. Transplant uh, out into natural conditions in week 29. I think these plants were shippable in 35, although the photographs were actually taken in week 37, much more open than you'd want to see. So I think we have a great opportunity with some very early varieties that need minimal amounts of Florel to make them size up and flower on time. Thank you for taking the time today to listen to the presentation. I hope you are able to implement some of these preventative practices to solve problems in your garden mum crop before they even happen. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. My email address is mark.a.smith at syngenta.com.